Coming up, a video from the archive uh, from our field day educational activity. It's a really interesting presentation, so please keep watching for more. Michael KB9 VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If content like that interests you, be sure to like and subscribe. Also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash KB9 VBR antennas. Well, uh, before I ride off to City Hall for budget meetings all this week, I thought I would just introduce this next video. And uh, what I did is I pulled something out of the archives. This was recorded uh, last field day. It's by uh, Joe, KD9CGX, and Jerry. Uh, W9GLG. They did our, uh, our our educational activity for this year's field day, and uh, it's a really good one. It's about uh, end-fed antennas and uh, the matching units or the transformers required for an end-fed antenna. So since we've been talking about the end-fed half wave for the last few videos, I thought it would be appropriate to uh, put this presentation out so you guys can get a little bit more background information on this style antennas. So without further ado, I'm just going to turn it over to Joe and Jerry and their presentation on end-fed antennas and the matching transformers required for them. So we're going to talk about end-fed antennas. I think first of all, to give you an idea of what they are, let's talk about the easiest antenna that we've all made. No, it's not a J-pole, it's a dipole. So here, a little centerpiece here, here's your feed line, and from here to here, it's half a uh, wavelength long, right? 468 divided by your frequency, you cut your wire to that length, you have a dipole. Real easy. It's like the Jedi going out and making his lightsaber, right? So. When we do this, and we have this in our feed point in the center, we have a feed point impedance between 50 and 72 ohms, really depending if you're running at a flat top or if you kind of got it in a sloper or inverted V configuration. <laughs> but we're just going to say 70 ohms. Right? Good. Now, some of you may be familiar with the off center fed a Wyndham, a Carolina Wyndham. So what they do on that one is we're not feeding it dead center. We're feeding it about one third, two third, cutting up a third, so we're over here. Now, same amount of wire for the most part, but we're shifting it. So this length is actually much longer, about two thirds. This is about one third of a wavelength we're feeding here. Now, as we move from center, our impedance changes. This is still resonant. This is still a half wave, but our impedance changes. Now, anyone who's taken a tech class, a general class, and me and Jerry are there, and we say SWR is not resonance, this is what we're talking about. So we shift this over here, an offset of a dipole, where in about 200 ohms. Okay, so that's a little bit outside of the range of an internal tuner. Manual tuner can handle 200 ohm impedance, um, but you have some losses, especially if you're feeding this with coax. Coax is a very lossy feed line. We all love it because it's 50 ohms and it works great, but it's, it, you have some losses here. So what we would do here is use a four to one on up or an uh, impedance transformer take it from that 200 ohms to 50 ohms. That's a ratio of about four to one. We're gonna talk a lot about ratios when Jerry gets up here. Yeah. But just keep that. Now, if I keep getting over to Jerry's side, an M-fed, hard to imagine, is fed at the end. We're over here. And all we're really doing is just taking that center connect conductor on the coax and attaching it to the wire. You don't have to attach anything to the braid. You don't. You can. It may help. It may not help. It could really mess things up. But in essence, you don't have to. We're feeding it from over here. Whether it's going to be coax or whether it's ladder line. And then this is one total half wave. 
So 468 divided by that. Now, when you get all the way over here, your impedance skyrockets. At resonance, 3,000 to 5,000 ohms, right? No tuner is going to do that. No manual tuner is going to do that. No magical tuner is going to handle that. So on an NFED, half wave dipole, this is a half wave, if your impedance is at 3,000 ohms, 5,000, you need about a 64 to 1 match. They make them. They're actually fairly common. Uh, there's a 64 to 1 and there's a 49 to 1. Now, if this is not a half wave, in fact, if it's, uh, let, me, let me stop back there, a couple of things. So, you can do this with a, with a Balan or an Unun. If you feed this with ladder line, which is a lot less lossy, you can actually cut your ladder line to an odd multiple of a quarter wavelength. So, one quarter wavelength, three quarter wavelengths, five quarter wavelengths, or a wave and a quarter, cut your feed line to that, your ladder line, your 400, 450, 600 ohm ladder line, and you can feed that. That would be that would be a match. You'd be matching that impedance based on that, and you could do this. And that was called a ZEP. The reason why they call it a ZEP is because that's how the antennas on the Zeppelins were. And then they just had this long wire hanging out the back of them, uh, like two, uh, like for, and those bands are like 200 meters, way down there in the mud below 160. And that's how they would do it, you know, the Zep antenna. Now we, most of us don't use ladder line anymore. Um, we use coax, so if we're using coax. We don't really have that ability to cut it. We can. It's not as an efficient transformer. We could just use a ballon or an unum to match this. Now the thing about a half wave at 7 megahertz or 7.1 megahertz, it will work on harmonics. It's not a coincidence that the amateur bands are 7, 14, 21, 28. Not a coincidence. All harmonics. So this 40 meters with a tuner should work 7, 14, 21, 28, 10 through 40. You have losses, you do. It's not the best, but it's a real simple design. You put what you get this someplace, you get this someplace. You can have it as a sloper. Right. You can have it as an inverted V. An inverted V is nice because at the highest point there is where your current's the highest. And if you get the current your that's where you're doing the most resonating. That's where your signal's really coming from, is where the current is the highest. So if you're there, and it's high, that works. These are good antennas, they work. Now, you don't have to do a half wave. That's another thing. So we talk about the NFED half wave dipole. What's the other one? The random wire, which is not random. Because you really want to have a length that is not a half wave. You want to avoid a half wave like it's the plague because what happens? Your impedance goes down. So a half wave, or as I say, a random wire. And if you look online, there are charts, there are graphs. There's plenty of things, but basically the same thing. We're still feeding it at the end, right? But this is no longer a half wave. It is not. So that gets us to an impedance. 400, 500 ohms, and that's where we find the, the 9 to 1 ballot. I run a random wire off the back of my house. I talk from Eastern Europe to the South Pacific. It works on 80 meters. It's great on 80 meters. I can check on any net in Midwest. Envis is perfect because it's a little low. Uh, 20 meters, 15 meters, works. It doesn't really work good on 10. I think it's a little too long for 10. But oh well, I'm missing ten. I, I can build a, I can build a ten meter antenna, you know. But they're easy. I mean, we can get wire cheap. Thirty bucks, you can get a ballon. You can build your own ballon. Uh, you can build ballons that can handle a lot of power. Jerry can tell you how they build they handle power. If you want to run a KW into a ballon, you can build it. Most handle a couple hundred watts, but but they're not. 
a hard antenna. They're, they are finicky, and you are going to have an external tuner, and you're going to have some losses. Uh, your, uh, your losses on a random wire, though, are not as bad as on an end fed. So, there's that. Um, but, so that's in essence what a, an end fed antenna is, either a random wire or a half wave. So, when someone says, oh, I have an end fed, ask them. Is it a half wave or is it a random wire? Oh, it's a half wave random wire. No, there's two separate things. <laughs> and, uh, you see it all the time on all the chat, uh, the discussion groups and everything. You know, they call it whatever, but there's really two things and it's good to know, especially if you're looking, because you can purchase these. I mean, 50 bucks, 60 bucks, you get one of these on eBay. You know, very nice. I had one for a while, I sold it to a guy. Um, they, uh, and, you know, they work. If you got a house, that you got a lot of trees in the backyard, you can put the mount the ballon on the house. Go. Now, these antennas, I, I talked to you a little bit about, you know, we don't really have anything over here. It's not grounded. There's no counterpoise or radios. Now you can do that. Um, and in many situations, it can help. There is a counterpoise. But it becomes the shielding on your coax. Yes. It becomes if, a power point. If you connect, well, you don't really have anything to connect it to. So if you're using an on on you could, or a balance. Yep. So the there. counterpoise, the shield can be that. The problem is that's usually what? We all get 50 foot lengths of coax. Buy a 15 or 25 if you gotta get it in the house. You know, or if you grounded it and bonded it correctly. Um, you have outside your house, you have a box with your polyphasers and that goes to ground and yada yada yada. Um, you can do that. You could cut your coax to an odd multiple of the wavelength, uh, odd multiple of the quarter wavelength, and go that route too. You would see some improvement there. Or you can cut a radio or a counterpoise, however you want to call it, they're basically the same thing, to a quarter wave. So again, 468, uh, no, 468, uh, 234 divided by your frequency is a quarter wave, right? So you could do that. And usually you cut it to the lowest frequency you're going to use. If you're going to use this for 40 meters, you cut it to like seven quarter wave of 7.1. If you run it for 80, 3.5, 3.9, depending on the CW or phone, whatever you do, you would do it that way. But you can do that. I run a lot of extra wire as a counterpoise. Goes under my deck, kind of goes around the house. It kind of has been covered over by weeds over the past five, six years. Uh, I have not hit it with the lawnmower yet. It works. So it, there's a lot of experimentation here. Um, but the nice thing about it is it's, it's forgiving. It's like an old Kenwood 520. You can't kill these things. I had a tree branch like this fall on my antenna. Took my power lines down, took my antenna down, and I was back up in two days. You know, simple. They make wire every day, but it's cheap, especially if you're an electrician. So, my 10 minutes are up. I'm gonna let Jerry take over from here. Okay. Well, Joel covered a lot of a lot of the stuff already on on what would be a, a random wire. The reason why you want to use a random wire rather than the half wave, like he says, because you get your impedance closer to 450 ohms here. When you start building that transmatch for this, there's a set ratio that works really well. All right. You got a toroid cord. There's a number of different ones you can buy online they're not expensive two three dollars you can get it you put it in with your two connectors you wrap three wires nine times around that toroid core equally spaced and that gives you your ratio of nine to one so when you get your nine to one that 450 ohms you've got for impedance is suddenly 50 ohms your radio is really happy any tuner will work the other thing that's nice and the reason I like the random wire is because now I can have an efficient antenna that doesn't even have to be a quarter wavelength long. 
If I get in between at the right places, and there's been a lot of hams out there that have experimented with this antenna, like Joe said, it's one of the oldest ones out there. I was telling them today, 49 feet, 3 inches. We'll get you six, six, six to 160 meters. It'll tune, you'll be able to hear. It's not going to be the most efficient antenna you can get, but it will get you on the air and it'll work just fine for making contacts all over the world. The other point is this antenna or the end fed doesn't have to be in a straight line. Say you're in a restricted area or a small lot, you can go out to this point over here as long as you're not greater than a 90 degree angle and you keep that angle like this, you can take it out there, go over there, come over here, go over there. You can put a dog leg in it. You can run it up and over. The reason why I like the shorter version, like 49 feet, is now you can run it as a vertical. And proven fact that I, I was talking to Joe too is that 84 feet long, all right, with an 18 foot counterpoise wire, Everybody says that works fantastic on 20. You can work all over the world on 20 meters. 20 meters, as we should know, is pretty much the band that's open year-round, anytime, during the day, evenings. You never know. It never dies. But that ballon that gets your impedance right, that's the key factor. Now, changing that toroid core, if you increase the size or get a larger one, and you increase the gauge of the wire that you're wrapping it with, you can increase the power, how, it, how much it can handle. Because basically that's all going to heat up in there because of your, your electrical current. It's a big inductor. Yeah. But if you get that right, with the right core, you can actually change what the frequency is or the resonance of that antenna. One versus the other will make it more efficient. So you, I even told them, I, the one I built, I built using I, what was it, 230, 238. Anyway, there's another core that I found after I built it that can actually lower my SWR from what I built with the same length of wire. Somebody had already done it. The information is there, you just gotta go and get it. But when it comes when it comes to that kind of antenna or you're in a situation like that, it's a compromise. All antennas are a compromise. Like Mike's antenna he has out has the 49 to 1, right? Transformer. Good antenna. Works great. You have to have an open mind when you look at it. All right? You're not restricted. There's somebody out there who's had the same problem. Random wire, the beauty of it is, is it can be so many different lengths. There are some that operate with them to 18 feet. And they can operate to 80 meters. Your SWR is a little high when you start getting down 6, 10, and 15, but it'll be pretty decent on 80. Then you get up into about 24, 25 feet, and all of a sudden it starts to drop on the lower bands and it gets better on the 10 and 6 and 15. Then there's a sweet spot right between 49, I think it's 48 feet and about 54 feet. Then it seems like everybody that tries it, it just levels out through all the bands. The highest you'll probably end up with an impedance is probably about 2.1. But again, it doesn't have to be in a straight line. So you can think, well, I can go around it. The only thing that I'd like to with Joel when he said that is, when you went to the off-center fed, that long part, that's your radiator, and the other part behind comes your counterpoise. You can run with the random wire, and you're using coax and an on-on, your coax is usually going to have the counterpoise in the shield. There's bad things that can happen when you do that. Number one, you've got your coax can actually radiate as part of the antenna. Now, Joe can experience, have experience of changing the TV channels on his wife. In Chipping his, GFI. In his knowledge of this antenna. Chipping GFIs or, you know, every now and then you go to touch the radio and you get it a little bit of a... Yeah, a little warm. It's more like a bee sting. Joe built what we would call an ugly ballon or a choke. Those are used a specific frequency to keep that from coming into your shack. It keeps your feed line from radiating. This one is, I believe, 20 meters. 
I haven't tested them yet. Cool. And the other one I believe is probably for 40 meters. Mm -hmm. There's information out on that too. How many turns, what the center, what the center you know, diameter should be, and what frequencies they are good for. That'll help to keep sanity and peace in the house. Otherwise, they, you can go out and buy or build what they call a line isolator, which is basically a choke. But they build it so that now you can just screw it in. It's usually in a plastic container rather than like this. It's prettier. It does the same thing. It prevents that coax from radiating. And you want that as close to that antenna's feed point as possible. Question? What if it's so, case scenario, say you have that off on the side of your house and you have your coax going up to like maybe the peak of your house and then you're using that as a sloper? Mm -hmm. If you were to put the ugly ballon near the bottom to where it comes like into the basement of your house, you can still have what that... It'll still radiate that far from there. That far? Right. Would that act as a counterpoise then? It does act as a counterpoise. So, Even with this, it still acts as a counterpoise. And you could okay. use that to your advantage. Yeah, that's what I was just saying. But it stops it from radiating. The counterpoise, you don't want to radiate your oh, signal. Okay. okay? That's to balance your set system. Yep. If it radiates, that means that this part of that wire isn't getting all the power. Yep. Some it's of it's coming back down this way. Heating up in the coax. Yeah. Yep. Think of that this is a high reactance inductor is what this really comes down to. It's a high reactance inductor because it's an outer shield. The inner shield, it doesn't do anything because it's the the inner the inner uh, conductor, I should say, is its impedance is only mainly affected by its distance to the outer uh, shield and its um, dielectric um, the foam or whatever is in here. So it's really just creating the inductor out of the outer foil and in which case, um, three, four thousand ohms of reactance. And then remember, reactance does not lead to power. It acts like a diode, basically, in, in, a, in a motor situation where you don't want yeah. the voltage coming back into your controller. Right. It's actually a good way to think of it. Yeah, you're, you're basically blocking that from coming that way. But You'll still get, functions. Yeah. You'll get some. You're still going to have some coming back, but for the most part, it will kill it all. And as long as you have the right size and number of reps, you could, you know, because reactance also varies based on frequency. So if you don't have, if you well, go I take to, some screws out. Um, mm -hmm. well, I take some screws out. You can your, 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 this, is, um, this is one that I made. Frequency changes. The reactance is going to change that coil. So it'll pass some frequencies, but it may it'll reject other ones. So keep that in mind. That's why you try to aim for like the lowest the lowest band that you're going to go for when you're tuned out. So if you if you wanted to scientifically set up that type of thing and not base it off a calculator, screwdriver, would you be able to use like an anal DNA with the, the signal side being fed into oh, it? We'll take it apart. Yep. Yeah. It yeah, you'd want to you want it wrapped out on a Smith chart like that. Okay. Yep. An anal DNA would do it. Okay. Well, thank you. But I mean, it's a great antenna to get on the air with, yeah. and especially in a compromising situation. I mean, you can buy the Wolf River coils and all these other ones that are verticals and stuff. They're more for portable use. This is something you put up at your home, you tune it, you leave it. It's going to work. One more question, and then I'll, and I swear I'll be done. On the end of an end fed, if you were to fold back a section, and being that it would be now, you would get into the measurement of, of setting up wavelength. That folded back section could be tunable, correct? Basically, you can tune it that way by taking this and you go through your insulator and you come back. If you want to bring it back and wrap it. Well, I was thinking about just running it back straight so that maybe you could make that a resonance. Mm. I don't know if it works. Well, you got to remember, if it's if it coming, once you come back at 180 degrees, our wrap ain't going to come around that corner. Yeah. Right. Okay. So it's just like that's, when you're tuning a dipole, you never snip, you fold it back. That's why I said if you don't go this. You don't want this, yeah. but this way is okay. Electricity doesn't like to turn corners any course. faster than this. Think of it Think of it like a car on a racetrack. You know, this is a lot easier to turn than this. Anytime it turns a corner, it loses a bit. It just flies right off into it either. It's gone. But okay. there's ways when you do dipoles, and that would be a whole other class, and when you're putting them up, how to avoid that. Using a piece of PVC and building yourself basically a 
PVC pole where your wire goes through the PVC and back and then you've got two ropes that go to the end of the PVC piece and come up and now you're tying this off so your antenna is basically coming up and doing this. So you can, you can do it, but you have to be creative in how you do it. A lot of experimentation. Well, somebody's been there before you. You know, that's the beauty of it. There's all kinds of information on all kinds of antennas. You can Google it or you can experiment either way. And the fun is in the experimentation. You know, that's, that's a lot of the fun of it. Well, I hope you found that interesting. Uh, for more articles and information, be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. If you're a supporter of this channel, drive some production of future videos. So like I always say, uh, like, subscribe, uh, really helps that algorithm out a lot. And also check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash kb 9 vbr antennas Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9VBR. Have a great day and 73.